Wali Arabic, Wali plural Ali Aliya is an Arabic word whose literal meanings include custodian, protector, helper, and friend. In the vernacular, it is most commonly used by Muslims to indicate an Islamic saint, otherwise referred to by the more literal friend of God. In the traditional Islamic understanding of saints, the saint is portrayed as someone marked by special divine favor and holiness and who is specifically chosen by god and endowed with exceptional gifts such as the ability to work miracles the doctrine of saints was articulated by islamic scholars very early on in muslim history and particular verses of the quran and certain hadith were interpreted by early muslim thinkers as documentary evidence of the existence of saints graves of saints around the muslim world became centers of pilgrimage especially after 1200 ce for masses of Muslims seeking their baraka blessing, since the first Muslim hagiographies were written during the period when the Islamic mystical trend of Sufism began its rapid expansion, many of the figures who later came to be regarded as the major saints in Orthodox Sunni Islam were the early Sufi mystics, like Hassan of Basra d. 728, Farqad Sabaki d. 729, Dawud Tai d. 787 to 781, Rabia al Adawiyah d. 801. Maruf Karki d. 815, and Junaid of Baghdad d. 910. From the 12th to the 14th century, the general veneration of saints, among both people and sovereigns, reached its definitive form with the organization of Sufism into orders or brotherhoods. In the common expressions of Islamic piety of this period, the saint was understood to be a contemplative whose state of spiritual perfection, found permanent expression in the teaching bequeathed to his disciples." In many prominent Sunni Islamic creeds of the time, such as the famous Creed of Tahawi and the Creed of Nasafi a belief in the existence and miracles of saints was presented as a requirement. For being an Orthodox Muslim believer, aside from the Sufis, the preeminent saints in traditional Islamic piety are the companions of Muhammad, their successors, and the third generation after the Prophet, often called, "...the successors of the successors." Additionally, the prophets of Islam are also believed to be saints by definition, although they are rarely referred to as such, in order to prevent confusion between them and ordinary saints. As the prophets are exalted by Muslims as the greatest of all humanity, it is a general tenet of Sunni belief that a single prophet is greater than all the regular saints put together. In short, it is believed that, every prophet is a saint, but not every saint is a prophet. In the modern world, the traditional Sunni and Shia idea of saints has been challenged by movements such as Salafism, Wahhabism, and Islamic modernism, all three of which have, to a greater or lesser degree, "...formed a front against the veneration and theory of saints." As has been noted by scholars, the development of these movements has indirectly led to a trend amongst some mainstream Muslims to resist, "...acknowledging the existence of Muslim saints altogether or, to view their presence and veneration as unacceptable deviations." However, despite the presence of these opposing streams of thought, the classical doctrine of saint veneration continues to thrive in many parts of the Islamic world today, playing a vital role in daily expressions of piety among vast segments of Muslim populations in Muslim countries like Pakistan, Egypt, Turkey, Senegal, Iraq, Iran, Algeria, Tunisia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Morocco, as well as in countries with substantive Islamic populations like India, China, Russia, and the Balkans. Topic names regarding the rendering of the Arabic wali by the English saint. Prominent scholars such as Jibril Haddad have regarded this as an appropriate translation, with Haddad describing the aversion of some Muslims towards the use of saint for wali as a specious objection, for this is like religion, din, believer, mu'min, prayer, salat, etc., a generic term for holiness and holy persons, while there is no confusion, for Muslims, over their specific reference in Islam, namely, the reality of iman with godwariness and those who possess those qualities. Qualities. In Persian, which became the second most influential and widely spoken language in the Islamic world after Arabic, the general title for a saint or a spiritual master became pur Persian, pyre literally old person, elder. 
Although the ramifications of this phrase include the connotations of a general saint, it is often used to specifically signify a spiritual guide of some type. Amongst Indian Muslims, the title Pir Baba, Pira Baba is commonly used in Hindi to refer to Sufi masters or similarly honored saints. Additionally, saints are also sometimes referred to in the Persian or Urdu vernacular with Hazrat. In Islamic mysticism, a peer's role is to guide and instruct his disciples on the mystical path. Hence, the key difference between the use of wali and pur is that the former does not imply a saint who is also a spiritual master with disciples, whilst the latter directly does so through its connotations of elder. Additionally, other Arabic and Persian words that also often have the same connotations as pur, and hence are also sometimes translated into English as saint, include murshid Arabic, mursht meaning guide or teacher, sheikh and sarkar Persian word meaning master. In the Turkish Islamic lands, saints have been referred to by many terms including the Arabic Wali, the Persian S, H, A and Pur, and Turkish alternatives like Baba in Anatolia, Ada in Central Asia both meaning father, as well as Aren or Ermis, H, to reach, attain or Yadi, R one who settles down in Anatolia. Their tombs, meanwhile, are "...denoted by terms of Arabic or Persian origin alluding to the idea of pilgrimage mazar, ziyaratka, tomb or domed mausoleum gunbad, but such tombs are also denoted by terms usually used for dervish convents, or a particular part of it tech in the Balkans, langar, refectory, and ribbit in Central Asia, or by a quality of the saint per, venerable, respectable, in Azerbaijan. History According to various traditional Sufi interpretations of the Quran, the concept of sainthood is clearly described. Some modern scholars, however, assert that the Quran does not explicitly outline a doctrine or theory of saints. In the Quran, the adjective wali is applied to God, in the sense of him being the friend of all believers. However, particular Quranic verses were interpreted by early Islamic scholars to refer to a special, exalted group of holy people. These included 10 to 62, "...surely God's friends no fear shall be on them, neither shall they sorrow," and 554, which refers to God's love for those who love him. Additionally, some scholars interpreted 4 to 69, "...whosoever obeys God and the Messenger, they are with those unto whom God hath shown favor, the prophets and the Siddiquina and the martyrs and the righteous. The best of company are they." to carry a reference to holy people who were not prophets and were ranked below the latter. The word Siddiquina in this verse literally connotes, "...the truthful ones", or "...the just ones", and was often interpreted by the early Islamic thinkers in the sense of "...saints", with the famous Quran translator Marmaduke Pikthal rendering it as "...saints", in their interpretations of the scripture. Furthermore, the Quran referred to the miracles of saintly people who were not prophets like Khidr 18 and the people of the cave 18 which also led many early scholars to deduce that a group of venerable people must exist who occupy a rank below the prophets but are nevertheless exalted by God. The references in the corpus of Hadith literature to bona fide saints like the pre-Islamic Jure J only lent further credence to this early understanding of saints, collected stories about the lives or vitae of the saints began to be compiled and transmitted at an early stage by many regular Muslim scholars, including Ibn Abi al Dunya, d. 894, who wrote a work entitled Kitab al Ali Lives of the Saints in the 9th century, which constitutes the earliest complete compilation on the theme of God's friends. Prior to Ibn Abi al Dunya's work, the stories of the saints were transmitted through oral tradition, but after the composition of his work, many Islamic scholars began writing down the widely circulated accounts, with later scholars like Abu Nuaym al Isfahani d. 948 making extensive use of Ibn Abi al Dunya's work in his own Hilyat al Ali. The adornment of the saints. It is, moreover, evident from the Kitab al Qas, H. F. Wa al Bayan of the early Baghdadi Sufi mystic Abu Sa'id al Karaz d. 899 that a cohesive understanding of the Muslim saints was already in existence, with al Karaz spending ample space distinguishing between the virtues and miracles of the Prophets and the saints. 
The genre of hagiography only became more popular with the passage of time, with numerous prominent Islamic thinkers of the medieval period devoting large works to collecting stories of various saints or to focusing upon the marvelous aspects of the life, the miracles or at least the prodigies of a specific Sufi or of a saint believed to have been endowed with miraculous powers. In the late 9th century, important thinkers in Sunni Islam officially articulated the previously oral doctrine of an entire hierarchy of saints, with the first written account of this hierarchy coming from the pen of al-Hakim al-Tirmidhi with the general consensus of Islamic scholars of the period accepting that the ulema were responsible for maintaining the exoteric part of Islamic orthodoxy, including the disciplines of law and jurisprudence, while the Sufis were responsible for articulating the religion's deepest inward truths, later prominent mystics like Ibn Arabi only further reinforced this idea of a saintly hierarchy, and the notion of types of saints became a mainstay of Sunni mystical thought, with such types including the Siddiqun, the truthful ones, and the Abdul the substitute saints, amongst others. It should be noted, however, that many of these concepts appear in writing far before Al-Tirmidhi and Ibn Arabi. The idea of the Abdul, for example, appears as early as the Musnad of Ibn Hanbal d. 855, where the word signifies a group of major saints, whose number would remain constant, one always being replaced by some other on his death. Quote, it is, in fact, reported that Ibn Hanbal explicitly identified his contemporary, the mystic Maruf Karki d. 815 as one of the Abdul, saying, He is one of the substitute saints, and his supplication is answered. From the 12th to the 14th century, the general veneration of saints, among both people and sovereigns, reached its definitive form with the organization of Sufism—the mysticism of Islam, into orders or brotherhoods. In general Islamic piety of the period, the saint was understood to be a contemplative whose state of spiritual perfection found permanent expression in the teaching bequeathed to his disciples. It was by virtue of his spiritual wisdom that the saint was accorded veneration in medieval Islam, and it is this which effected his canonization, and not some ecclesiastical institution as in Christianity. In fact, the latter point represents one of the crucial differences between the Islamic and Christian veneration of saints, for saints are venerated by unanimous consensus or popular acclaim in Islam, in a manner akin to all those Christian saints who began to be venerated prior to the institution of canonization. In fact, a belief in the existence of saints became such an important part of medieval Islam that many of the most important creeds articulated during the time period, like the famous Creed of Tahawi, explicitly declared it a requirement for being an «orthodox» Muslim to believe in the existence and veneration of saints and in the traditional narratives of their lives and miracles. Hence, we find that even medieval critics of the widespread practice of venerating the tombs of saints, like Ibn Taymiyyah d. 1328, never denied the existence of saints as such, with the Hanbali jurist stating, "...the miracles of saints are absolutely true and correct, by the acceptance of all Muslim scholars. And the Quran has pointed to it in different places, and the sayings of the Prophet have mentioned it, and whoever denies the miraculous power of saints are only people who are innovators and their followers." In the words of one contemporary academic, practically all Muslims of that era believed that, "...the lives of saints and their miracles were incontestable." In the modern world, the idea of saints has been challenged by the movements of Salafism and Wahhabism, whose influence has formed a front against the veneration and theory of saints. Quote, for the adherents of Wahhabism, for example, the practice of venerating saints appears as an abomination, for they see in this a form of idolatry. It is for this reason that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which adheres to the Wahhabi creed, destroyed the tombs of saints wherever able during its expansion in the Arabian Peninsula from the 18th century onwards. As has been noted by scholars, the development of these movements have indirectly led to a trend amongst some mainstream Muslims to also resist acknowledging the existence of Muslim saints altogether or to view their presence and veneration as unacceptable deviations. Quote, 
At the same time, the movement of Islamic modernism has also opposed the traditional veneration of saints, for many proponents of this ideology regard the practice as being both un Islamic and backwards rather than the integral part of Islam which they were for over a millennium. Despite the presence, however, of these opposing streams of thought, the classical doctrine of saint veneration continues to thrive in many parts of the Islamic world today, playing a vital part in the daily piety of vast portions of Muslim countries like Pakistan, Egypt, Turkey, Senegal, Iraq, Iran, Algeria, Tunisia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Morocco, as well as in countries with substantive Islamic populations like India, China, Russia, and the Balkans. Topic. Definitions The general definition of the Muslim saint in classical texts is that he represents a «friend of God» marked by «special» divine favor and «holiness» being specifically «chosen by God and endowed with exceptional gifts, such as the ability to work miracles». Moreover, the saint is also portrayed in traditional hagiographies as one who, in some way, acquires his friends, i.e., God's, good qualities, and therefore he possesses particular authority, forces, capacities, and abilities. Amongst classical scholars, Kushari d. 1073 defined the saint as someone whose obedience attains permanence without interference of sin, whom God preserves and guards, in permanent fashion, from the failures of sin through the power of acts of obedience." Elsewhere, the same author quoted an older tradition in order to convey his understanding of the purpose of saints, which states, "...the saints of God are those who, when they are seen, God is remembered." Meanwhile, Al-Hakim al-Tirmidhi the most significant 9th-century expositor of the doctrine, posited six common attributes of true saints not necessarily applicable to all, according to the author, but nevertheless indicative of a significant portion of them, which are, 1 when people see him, they are automatically reminded of God, 2 anyone who advances towards him in a hostile way is destroyed, 3 he possesses the gift of clairvoyance 4 he receives divine inspiration to be strict distinguished from revelation proper wahi, with the latter being something only the prophets receive. Five, he can work miracles by the leave of God, which may differ from saint to saint, but may include marvels such as walking on water and shortening space and time and six, he associates with khidr. Al-Tirmidhi states, furthermore, that although the saint is not sinless like the prophets, he or she can nevertheless be "...preserved from sin." Mafas by the grace of God. The contemporary scholar of Sufism Martin Lings described the Islamic saints as the great incarnations of the Islamic ideal. Spiritual giants with which almost every generation was blessed. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classical testimonies. The doctrine of saints, and of their miracles, seems to have been taken for granted by many of the major authors of the Islamic Golden Age ca. 700 as well as by many prominent late medieval scholars. The phenomena in traditional Islam can be at least partly ascribed to the writings of many of the most prominent Sunni theologians and doctors of the classical and medieval periods, many of whom considered the belief in saints to be «orthodox» doctrine. Examples of classical testimonies include God has saints whom he has specially distinguished by his friendship and whom he has chosen to be the governors of his kingdom. He has made the saints governors of the universe. Through the blessing of their advent the rain falls from heaven, and through the purity of their lives the plants spring up from the earth, and through their spiritual influence the Muslims gain victories over the truth concealers." Hujawiri d. 1072 Sunni Hanafi jurist and mystic. The miracles of the saints are a reality. The miracle appears on behalf of the saint by way of contradicting the customary way of things. And such a thing is reckoned as an evidentiary miracle on behalf of the messenger to one of whose people this act appears, because it is evident from it that he is a saint, and he could never be a saint unless he were right in his religion, and his religion is the confession of the message of the messenger. Al Nasafi, d. 1142, Creed 15, Sunni Hanafi theologian. 
The miracles of saints are absolutely true and correct, and acknowledged by all Muslim scholars. The Quran has pointed to it in different places, and the Hadith of the Prophet have mentioned it, and whoever denies the miraculous power of saints are innovators or following innovators." Ibn Taymiyyah d. 1328, Muqtasar al-Fatawa al-Masriya, Sunni Hanbali theologian and jurisconsult Seeking of blessings The rationale for veneration of deceased saints by pilgrims in an appeal for blessings baraka, even though the saints will not rise from the dead until the day of resurrection yam ad -din, may come from the hadith that states the prophets are alive in their graves and they pray. According to the Islamic concept of punishment of the grave, established by hadith, the dead are still conscious and active, with the wicked suffering in their graves as a prelude to hell and the pious at ease, according to Islamic historian Jonathan A. C. Brown. Saints are thought to be no different than prophets, as able in death to answer invocations for assistance, as they were while alive. <laughs> Types and hierarchy Saints were envisaged to be of different «types» in classical Islamic tradition. Aside from their earthly differences as regard their temporal duty i.e. jurist, hadith scholar, judge, traditionist, historian, ascetic, poet, saints were also distinguished cosmologically as regards their celestial function or standing. In Islam, however, the saints are represented in traditional texts as serving separate celestial functions, in a manner similar to the angels, and this is closely linked to the idea of a celestial hierarchy in which the various types of saints play different roles. A fundamental distinction was described in the 9th century by Al-Tirmidhi in his Surat al-Ali Lives of the Saints, who distinguished between two principal varieties of saints, the Wali Haq Allah, on the one hand, and the Wali Allah on the other. According to the author, the spiritual ascent of the Wali Haq Allah must stop at the end of the created cosmos. He can attain God's proximity, but not God himself, he is only admitted to God's proximity It is the Wali Allah who reaches God. Ascent beyond God's throne means to traverse consciously the realms of light of the divine names. When the Wali Allah has traversed all the realms of the divine names, i.e. has come to know God in his names as completely as possible, he is then extinguished in God's essence. His soul, his ego, is eliminated and when he acts, it is God who acts through him. And so the state of extinction means at the same time the highest degree of activity in this world. Although the doctrine of the hierarchy of saints is already found in written sources as early as the 8th century, it was Al Tirmidhi who gave it its first systematic articulation. According to the author, forty major saints, whom he refers to by the various names of Siddiqan, Abdul, Yuman, and Nusa, were appointed after the death of Muhammad to perpetuate the knowledge of the divine mysteries vouchsafed to them by the Prophet. These forty saints, al Tirmidhi stated, would be replaced in each generation after their earthly death, and, according to him, "...the fact that they exist is a guarantee for the continuing existence of the world." Among these forty, al Tirmidhi specified that seven of them were especially blessed. Despite their exalted nature, however, al Tirmidhi emphasized that these forty saints occupied a rank below the Prophets. Later important works which detailed the hierarchy of saints were composed by the mystic Amar al-Bidlizi d. between 1194 and 1207, the spiritual teacher of Najmuddin Kubra d. 1220, and by Ruzbahan Bakli d. 1209, who evidently knew of a highly developed hierarchy of God's friends. The differences in terminology between the various celestial hierarchies presented by these authors were reconciled by later scholars through their belief that the earlier mystics had highlighted particular parts and different aspects of a single, cohesive hierarchy of saints. <laughs> Regional veneration The amount of veneration a specific saint received varied from region to region in Islamic civilization, often on the basis of the saint's own history in that region. While the veneration of saints played a crucial role in the daily piety of Sunni Muslims all over the Islamic world for more than a thousand years ca. 800 exactly which saints were most widely venerated in any given cultural climate depended on the hagiographic traditions of that particular area. 
Thus, while Moinuddin Chishti d. 1236, for example, was honoured throughout the Sunni world in the medieval period, his cultus was especially prominent in the Indian subcontinent, as that is where he was believed to have preached, performed the majority of his miracles, and ultimately settled at the end of his life. North Africa As has been remarked by scholars, the veneration of saints has played an essential role in the religious, and social life of the Maghreb for more or less a millennium." In other words since Islam first reached the lands of North Africa in the 8th century. The first written references to ascetic Muslim saints in Africa, "...popularly admired and with followings," appear in 10th century hagiographies. As has been noted by scholars, however, "...the phenomenon may well be older." For many of the stories of the Islamic saints were passed down orally before finally being put to writing. One of the most widely venerated saints in early North African Islamic history was Abu Yazza or Ya Azza, d. 1177, an illiterate Sunni Maliki miracle worker whose reputation for sanctity was admired even in his own life. Another immensely popular saint of the time period was Ibn Herzahim d. 1163, who also gained renown for his personal devoutness and his ability to work miracles. It was Abu Madian d. 1197, however, who eventually became one of the Aliyah Allah of the entire Maghreb. A spiritual disciple of these two preceding saints, Abu Madian, a prominent Sunni Maliki scholar, was the first figure in Maghrebi Sufism to exercise an influence beyond his own region." Abu Madian traveled to the east, where he is said to have met prominent mystics like the renowned Hanbali jurist Abdul Qadir Ghulani Upon returning to the Maghreb, Abu Madian stopped at Bajaya and "...formed a circle of disciples." Abu Madian eventually died in Tlemcen. While making his way to the Almohad court of Marrakesh, he was later venerated as a prime Aliyah Allah of Tlemcen by popular acclaim. One of Abu Madian's most notable disciples was Abd al Salam ibn Mas, H. as H. D. 1127, a saint who had a posthumous fame through his being recognized as a master and a pole by. Abu L. Hassan al S. H. Ad. H. Ely. It was this last figure who became the preeminent saint in Maghrebi piety, due to his being the founder of one of the most famous Sunni Sufi orders of North Africa, the Shadhiliya Tariqa. Adhering to the Maliki rite in its jurisprudence, the Shadhili order produced numerous widely honored Sunni saints in the intervening years, including Fassi Ahmad al d. 1494, who was educated in Egypt but taught in Libya and Morocco, and Abu Abd Allah Muhammad al d. 1465, who returned to Morocco after a long trip to the east and then began a life as a hermit, and who achieved widespread renown for the miracles he is said to have wrought by the leave of God. Eventually, the latter was buried in Marrakesh, where he ended up becoming of the city's seven most famous Aliyah Allah for the Sunnis of the area. Some of the most popular and influential Maghrebi saints and mystics of the following centuries were Muhammad b. Nasir d. 1674, Ahmad al-Tij, Ani d. 1815, Abu Hamid al-Arabi al-Darqawi and Ahmad b. Alawi d. 1934, with the latter three originating Sufi orders of their own. Famous adherents of the Shadhili order amongst modern Islamic scholars include Abdallah bin Bayah b. 1935, Muhammad Alawi al-Maliki d. 2004, Hamza Yusuf b. 1958, and Muhammad al-Yakobi b. 1963. The veneration of saints in Maghrebi Sunni Islam has been studied by scholars with regard to the various types of saints venerated by Sunnis in those areas. These include 1. The pure, ascetic hermit, who is honored for having refused all ostentation, and is commemorated not on account of his written works but by virtue of the reputation he is believed to have had for personal sanctity, miracles, and inward wisdom or gnosis. 2. The ecstatic and eccentric saint. Mad. J. D. H. Yub, who is believed to have maintained orthodoxy in his fulfillment of the pillars of the faith, but who is famous for having taught in an unusually direct style or for having divulged the highest truths before the majority in a manner akin to Halaj. D. 922. Famous and widely venerated saints of this type 
Include Ibn al Mar A. D. 1214, Ali al Sanaj, ca. 16th century, Abd al Rahman al Mad, J. D. H. Yub, literally, Abd al Rahman the Ecstatic, D. 1569. 3. The Warrior Saint, place Marabadan or Martyr. 4. Female saints, who may belong to one of the aforementioned three categories or some other. It has been remarked that Maghrebi sainthood is by no means confined to men, and some of the tombs of female saints are very frequently visited. 5. Jewish saints. That is to say, venerable Jewish personages whose tombs are frequented by Sunni Muslims in the area for the seeking of blessings regarding the veneration of saints amongst Sunni Muslims in the Maghreb in the present day. Scholars have noted the presence of many thousands of minor, local saints whose tombs remain visible in villages or the quarters of towns. Although many of these saints lack precise historiographies or hagiographies, their presence and their social efficacity are immense in shaping the spiritual life of Muslims in the region. For the vast majority of Muslims in the Maghreb even today, the saints remain very much alive at their tomb, to the point that the person's name most often serves to denote the place. While this classical type of Sunni veneration represents the most widespread stance in the area, the modern influence of Salafism and Wahhabism have challenged the traditional practice in some quarters. Turkey, the Balkans, the Caucasus and Azerbaijan Scholars have noted the tremendously «important role» the veneration of saints has historically played in Islamic life all these areas, especially amongst Sunnis who frequent the many thousands of tombs scattered throughout the region for blessings in performing the act of ziyara. According to scholars between the Turks of the Balkans and Anatolia, and those in Central Asia, despite the distance separating them, the concept of the saint and the organization of pilgrimages displays no fundamental differences." The veneration of saints really spread in the Turkish lands from the 10th to the 14th centuries, and played a crucial role in medieval Turkic Sunni piety not only in cosmopolitan cities but also, "...in rural areas and amongst nomads of the whole Turkish world." One of the reasons proposed by scholars for the popularity of saints in pre-modern Turkey is that Islam was majorly spread by the early Sunni Sufis in the Turkish lands, rather than by purely exoteric teachers. Most of the saints venerated in Turkey belong to the Hanafi school of Sunni jurisprudence. As scholars have noted, saints venerated in traditional Turkish Sunni Islam may be classified into three principal categories. 1 The G.H. Azis or early Muslim saints who preached the faith in the region and were often martyred for their religion. Some of the most famous and widely venerated saints of this category include the Prophet Muhammad's companion Abu Ayyub al-Ansari who was killed beneath the walls of Constantinople and was honored as a martyr shortly thereafter, and Sayyid Battle G. H. Azi d. 9th century, who fought the Christians in Anatolia during the Umayyad period. 2 Sufi saints, who were most often Sunni mystics who belonged to the Hanafi school of Sunni jurisprudence and were attached to one of the orthodox Sufi orders like the Naqshbandi or the Mevlavi. 3 The ''Greats Figures of Islam'', both pre-Islamic and those who came after Muhammad, as well as certain sainted rulers. <laughs> Reverence of Aliya Allah Reverence for Aliya Allah have been an important part of both Sunni and Shia Islamic tradition that particularly important classical saints have served as the heavenly advocates for specific Muslim empires, nations, cities, towns, and villages. With regard to the sheer omnipresence of this belief, the late Martin Lings wrote, "...there is scarcely a region in the Empire of Islam which has not a Sufi for its patron saint." As the veneration accorded saints often develops purely organically in Islamic climates, the Aliya Allah are often recognized through popular acclaim rather than through official declaration. Traditionally, it has been understood that the Wali Allah of a particular place prays for that place's well-being and for the health and happiness of all who live therein. Here is a partial list of Muslim Aliya Allah. See also Amir List of Sufi saints List of Sufis Mala PIR Wali Islamic legal guardian Wali Sangha 
The verse of Walaya References Further reading Primary Ibn Abi L. Dunya, K. Al Ali, in Mad. J. M. at Ras Il, Cairo 1354-1935. Abu Nu Aym al Isbahani, Hilyat al Ali, Cairo 1351 ff, 1932 ff. Abu Sa'id al K. H. Iraz, K. al Qas, H. F. Wa al Bayan, ed. K. al Samar, Bag. H. Dad 1967. Al Hakim al Termid, H. K. K. H. A. T. M. Al Ali, ed. O. Yahya, Beirut, 1965. Item K. Surat Al Ali, ed. B. Radki, in Dry Shrijdan, I. 1 to 134, Beirut, 1992. Item Al Fark Bain Al Ayat Wa El Karamat, Miz. Ankara, Ismail Sabai, 1571, Foles. 152 B. 177 B. Item, Bad S. H. N. Abi Abd Allah, ed. Yahya, in Termid, H. K. H. A. T. M., 14 32, Fax, and German Tr., in Radke, Termid, Yana Menorah, 244 77, Eng, Tr., in Radke and Okane, Concept of Sainthood, 15 36. Handbooks. Badisi. Al Maxid. Tr. G. Colin, in Archives Marocains, XXVIXXVII. 1926. G. H. Ubrini, Unwin al Dariya, Algiers 1970. Hud. J. Weary, Cass. H. F. Al Mod, J. Ub. ed. V. Zukovsky, R. E. P. R. Tehran 1336 1958, 265 ff. Tr. Nicholson, The Cash al Majub. The Oldest Persian Treatise on Sufism, Leiden, London 1911, 210–41 Kalabad, H. al ta Aruf li mad, H. Hab al al tasawaf ed. Arbery, Cairo 1934, tr. Item, The Doctrine of the Sufis, 2, Cambridge 1977, ch. 26 Sarad, J. K. al-Luma fi al-Tasawaf, ed. Nicholson, Leiden, London, 1914, 315 to 32. G. E. R. T. R. R. Gramlich, Schlaglichter über das Sufidum, Stuttgart, 1990, 449 to 68. Abu Talib al Maki, Kut al Kulab, Cairo, 1932. G. E. R. T. R. Gramlich, Die Nahrung der Herzen, Wiesbaden, 1992 to 95. Index S. V. Gott's friend. Cus, H. Airy, Rizala, Many Eds, Ger. Tr. Gramlich, Das Senschreiben al Quisaris, Wiesbaden 1989, Index, S. V. Gott's Friend Amar al Bidlizi, Zwe Mistisch Schriften, ed. E. Bedin, forthcoming Beirut Ibn al Arabi, al Futuhad al Makiya, Cairo 1329 1911 Item, Ra al Quds, Damascus 1964, Eng. Tr. R. W. Austin, The Sufis of Andalusia, London 1971, Fr. Tr. G. Leconte, Les Sufis d'Andalusie, Paris 1995, F. Meyer, Die Vida des Sheikh Abu Ishaq al Khazaruni, Leipzig 1948, Muhammad B. Munawar, Asrar al Tahid fi Makamat al S. H. A. Y. K. H. Abi Sa'id, ed. Muhammad S. H. A. F. I. Kadkani, Tehran 1366 7, Eng. Tr. J. O. Kane, The Secrets of God's Mystical Oneness, New York 1992. Aziz al Din Nasafi, K. al Insan al Kamil, ed. M. Mole, Tehran Paris 1962, 313 25. Ibn Taymiyyah, al Furqan Baina Ali al Rahman wa Ali al S. H. Aitan, Cairo 1366 1947. Item, Hakikat Mad. H. Hab al Ithihadian, in Mad. J. M. at al Ras il wa el Mas il, IV, Cairo n. d. 1 ff. Ibn A. Allah, La if al Minan, Fr. Tr. E. Geoffroy, La Sagesse des Maters Sufis, Paris 1998. 
Secondary H. Corbin, N. Islam Iranian, especially. E. Paris 1972 M. Chidkovich, Le Sceau des Saints, Paris 1986 Jarundert Hydshra. Eine Geschichte des religiösen Denkens im Fruen Islam, IV, Berlin, New York 1991-7 B. Radke and J. O. Kane, The Concept of Sainthood in Early Islamic Mysticism, London 1996 Radke, Dry Schriften des Theosophen von Termied, I, Beirut Stuttgart 1992, E, Beirut Stuttgart 1996 R, Mach, Der Zadig in Talmud und Midrash, Leiden 1957 Radke, Termid, Yana Menorah, in Orions, XXXIV 242–98 Gramlich, Die Wunder der Freunde Gottes, Wiesbaden 1987 Item, die Schiedischen der Wieschorden Persians, Wiesbaden 1965–81, e. 160–5 on the Hierarchy of Saints C. Ernst, Rusbahan Bekli, London 1996 Radke, Zwischen Traditionalisms und Intellectualismus. Geistesgeschichtliche und Historiographische Bemerkungen zum Ibris de Ahmad b. Al Mubarak al Lamati, in Built on Solid Rock. Festschrift für Ebbe Knudsen, Oslo 1997, 240–67 H. S. Nyberg, Kleinier Schriften des Ibn al-Arabi, Leiden 1919, 103–20 A. Afifi, The Mystical Philosophy of Mahayid din Ibil Arabi, Cambridge 1939 W. Chittik, The Sufi Path of Knowledge, Albany 1989 Jamil M. Abun Nasser, The Tijaniya a Sufi Order in the Modern World, London 1965 Radke, Lehrer Schuler Enkel, Ahmad B. Idris, Muhammad Ut, Man al Mirghani, Ism il al Wali, in Orion's, XXXIII, 1992, 94 132, I. Goldziher, Die Heiligen im Islam, in Muh. Stud, E., 275 378. Grace Martin Smith and C. W. Ernst E. D. S. Manifestations of Sainthood in Islam, Istanbul, 1993. H. C. H. Lawyer et C. L. Gilead E. D. S. Le culte des saints dans le monde musulman, Paris, 1995. Topic. <laughs> external links. Martin Ling's Proofs of Islam. Transcript of lecture delivered at the Islamic Cultural Center, later published in ILM Magazine, Vol. 10 No. 1, December 1985, pp. 3–8